Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve logarithmic equations. Now, when solving logarithmic equations, um, previously what we did was solving logarithmic equations just by rewriting them in exponential form. But you can see in each and every one of these, we have more than one logarithm. So um, we just can't quickly and easily switch it over to exponential form, because exponential form, to go from logarithm to exponential form, we had to have a logarithm isolated. Now, if we have the logarithms on the same side, we can still use the rules of logarithms to condense it down to one logarithm. And if we have a logarithm on both sides, we could also use the one-to-one -one property that we use in exponential form by taking a log of b base to x equals log base b to y. I'm about to sneeze. Since the bases are the same, you could just set the, um, the values of each logarithm equal to one another. Um, the next thing that we also want to do is, since we have, we have two logarithms, we also want to make sure we can uh, check for extraneous solutions or solutions that are not work. Because if you remember, when we were, taking, uh, when we were looking at the solution of a logarithm, Here's a logarithm with no transformation. Now, all of these are going to have transformations. So it is possible to have negative solutions. However, in a logarithm of no solution, we, we can't take an x value and plug it into you know, log base b of x. There is no negative x that we can plug. So whenever we take our solutions, when we plug them back into, our, um, into the original formula, we can't take the log of a negative answer. And we'll get to this as we work along. But I wanted to kind of show you just of the graph with no transformations. You can't take the, the negative, you can't take the log of a negative value. All right, so in the first case here, I have, a log, I have two logarithms on the same side. Now, I don't want to add them to the other side to do my one-to-one -one property, because if I did that, I still have this 2 here. And the one-to-one -one property only works when you have a logarithm equal to a logarithm. Since there's that 2 here, we can't complete the one-to-one -one property. So what I'm going to have to do is keep these logarithms here and condense them down to one logarithm. And I can do that using my rules of exponents, which is the product rule. And remember, the product rule states if you have two logarithms, as long as they have the same base and you're adding them, you can rewrite that as the product of those two um, values. Okay. Now I have a logarithm that's been isolated equal to a value. I can rewrite this in exponential form. So 4 squared equals negative x squared, I'll apply distributive property here, uh, minus 10x. Okay. Now I can rewrite this as 16 equals. I'm going to factor, uh, yeah, let's keep that in there first. Um, da, da, da. Actually, let's leave this out. I'll do one more. OK, 16 equals negative x squared minus 10x. Now you can see that I have a quadratic. My x that I need to solve for is being raised to the second power. So therefore, I'm going to treat this as a quadratic equation, where I can either solve by factoring, I can solve by the quadratic formula, completing the square, and so forth. So the first thing I want to do is try to see if I can solve by factoring. So to do that, I need to get all the, all the terms on the one side and set it equal to 0. So I have 0 equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 16. I don't like factoring when my a is negative, so I'm going to factor out a negative 1. That's not going to affect my solution, because I can divide out that negative 1 at any time. So I have 0 equals x squared plus 10x plus 16. Now, to go ahead and factor that, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and um, rewrite this in factored form. So 0 equals, let's see, what two numbers multiply to give me 16, add to give me 10? That's going to be x plus 8 as well as x plus 2. Okay, um, hmm. run out of space. So therefore, now what I can do is use the zero product property, say x plus 8 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. To solve, I get x equals negative 8, and x equals negative 2. Okay, now going back to my and. Going back to what I was describing over here, I have to go back and make sure my solutions work. Because you can see they're negative, right? And a lot of times when students see negative, they're like, oh, it's extraneous. Well, not necessarily. This graph, this, if you were to graph this, has some transformations. Shifting left, right, up and down, crazy. This has no transformation. So yes, of no transformation, you can't, take the you can't have a negative x. However, when you have transformations, we just can't, make the we just can't take the value of the logarithm to be negative. Now watch what happens. When I take negative 8 and plug it in for x and for both these logarithms, let's see if it works. Negative 8 in for negative x is positive 8. That works. Negative 8 in for x here is positive 2. So that works. So negative 8 checks out. So I just do a nice little check mark, which me as a student would tell my teacher that I've checked both solutions. Obviously, if we had a little bit more time, if I wasn't doing six examples, you could also just plug it in and show your work. But I'm going to kind of move ahead a little bit quicker than that. 
Negative 2 plugged in for negative x is positive 2. That works. Negative 2 plugged in for negative x is positive 8. So that works. So both of my solutions work out. OK. And the next example is very similar to the other one. So you, know, you have the logarithms on the same side. You have another number. You have the same basis. So let's just go ahead and do the same work that we did here last time. OK. Um, again, I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form to kind of save a little work. I'm just going to 2 to the q, third power is 8. And then I'll distribute this, x squared minus 2x. I'll subtract the 8 on both sides. So I get 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now what I need to do is determine which values multiply to give me negative 8. So now I can factor again. Which values multiply to give me negative 8, but then add to give me negative 4. So that's 0 equals, let's see, x minus 4 times x plus 2. You apply the zero product property. OK, so now I've solved for my two solutions. Now what I want to do is plug them back in to see if either of them are extraneous. I take 4. I can plug 4 directly in for x. That works. I can plug 4 in for x here. 4 minus 2 is 2. That works. Then I take negative 2. Negative 2 in for x, you can't take the log base 2 of negative 2, right? So therefore, that is extraneous. And I just circle it, and I just write ext for extraneous. That is not a, it is a solution, but it's an extraneous solution. OK, um, the next one, we have the same thing basically going on, except now I have two binomials. So I'm going to do log base 3 of x plus 6 times x plus 4 equals 1. Raise it, or rewrite in exponential form. 3 to the first power is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 4x plus 24. Right, just expanding that out. Uh, I'll subtract the 3 on both sides. So I get 0 equals x squared plus 10x plus 21. How does this happen again? Oh, OK, well, this one at least works. Um, so now I need to go ahead and factor this. So I'll go ahead, 0 equals x x plus 7 times x plus 3. So therefore, I get uh, um, x plus 7 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. So therefore, x equals negative 7, x equals negative 3. Now when I plug in negative 7 in here, negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. That's extraneous. You can't take the logarithm of a negative number. However, when I try negative 3, negative 3 in for x gives me a positive 3. Negative 3 in for x gives me a positive 1. So that works. Okay, So just because an answer is negative does not mean it's extraneous. You have to make sure you plug it back in to make sure it works. A lot of students get that kind of, confu or get that kind of mixed up. All right, and the next one's going to take us a, a little bit of extra work. Um, so I'm just going to kind of short line a little bit. Um, so I have 5 squared is equal to, I'm going to multiply these out. Um, it's going to be the product of these two. Oh, wait, I guess I, yeah, let's simplify this to log base 5. Um, let's multiply these out. x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 2. I'm going to need a little bit extra work, so that's why I'm kind of speeding this along. So therefore, that's going to equal 5 squared is equal to that. So that's going to be 25 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4. So therefore, I can subtract a 25 on both sides. And I get 0 equals x squared plus 5x minus 21. OK, so in this problem, we have a little bit of an issue because I can't factor this. I can't find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 21 and add to give me 5. So if you remember when I said, hey, when we have quadratics, if we can't find the solutions, then we have to look for factoring. Then we have to look at the quadratic formula. x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Remember, that's from your equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. OK, so now I'm going to just plug this into the quadratic formula. So my solutions are going to be x equals plus or minus, uh, or sorry, opposite of b, which is negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, and then all divided by 2a. Okay. So let's go ahead and simplify this. I'll grab my calculator here. So it's going to be negative 5 plus or minus. It's 
gonna be 25. Let's see, that's gonna be positive 21, that's gonna be 42, that's gonna be 84. Hundred and nine. Um, let me just see. Yeah, four times twenty-one, eighty-four, right? Plus twenty-five. Hundred nine. Okay. So therefore, I have x equals negative five plus or minus the square root of one hundred and nine divided by two. All right. Now. Here's where it kind of gets a little crazy, because you might think, all right, well, you could easily do the decimal version of this, right? A negative 5 plus square root of 25, uh, square root of 100, 109 is approximately 10, OK? So negative 5 plus, let's just round it to 10, divided by 2 is going to give me a positive number. If I plug in a positive number back into my equation, am I still going to have two positive logarithms? Yes. However, what if I did negative 5 minus negative 10, approximately, right? It's 10.4. So if I did 10.44 repeating or uh, irrational, negative 5 minus 10 is negative 15. Divided by 2 is like negative 7 change. If I plug in negative 7 into both of these logarithms, therefore it's not going to work, right? If these, both of these are going to be negative. So therefore, my only solution is x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 109 divided by 2. So I'll just go ahead and compute that. Uh, minus 5. Oops. So I'll do the square root of 109 uh, plus a negative, which is the same thing as minusing 5, and then divide by 2. And I get 2.7, uh, approximately 2.72. I'll just round to nearest hundredth. OK? Um, all right, so in the next example, you can see we have logarithms on both sides. So now we can't just isolate a logarithm on one side. What we have to do is get the logarithm. We have to, what we want to do is use the one-to-one -one property. So in this case, what a, um, so in this case, basically what I'll, uh, what I'll want to do here is basically combine these. Um, I can combine these, so I get log of 3x minus 3 is equal to log of x plus 1 times 4. OK, well, now what's important about this is now that I have a logarithm equal to another logarithm, their values are going to be exactly the same. 3x minus 3 is equal to 4x plus 4. So now I'll just solve for my logarithm. So I subtract a 3x, subtract a 3x. Negative 3 equals x plus 4. Subtract 4, subtract 4. Negative 7 equals x. So negative 7 is my solution. However, I want to make sure I plug that back in. And when I do, when I plug that back in, I plug negative 7. So it's only one solution. When I plug negative 7 back in here, I get negative 21 minus 23 is negative 24. It doesn't work, so that's extraneous. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. So therefore, it's extraneous. And since that's the only solution, we're, gonna, um, we're just going to write no solution. Okay. In the next example, this is one of the easier ones that we come up to. Whenever you have a logarithm to another logarithm, you can just apply the one-to-one -one property. So therefore, I have 2x minus 3 equals x plus 4. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is that simple. So now, x equals 7. However, when I plug x equals 7 into this equation, I get 14 minus 3, which is 11, and 7 plus 4, which is 11. So it works um, for both of them. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve logarithmic equations. Thanks.